Hey everyone, a uh, little impromptu live stream. I am um, working on a lightsaber for somebody, so I thought I'd stream a little bit of it and just hang out. I know it's a really odd time for most of you, but if you catch me on this stream, then great. If not, well, you can watch it again anyway. I probably won't be super interactive because I'm actually going to be soldering, but it should be fun. Hopefully. Um, let's see. That's going. Well, anyway, yeah. Hey, Pretzel Boy. Hey, Lord Vader. I'm going to do something really quickly so that I can hopefully keep up with you all on chat a little bit better. Um, we'll see if I can do this. Um, uh, come on. There we go. I think, yeah. Get that set. All right. Hey, do one more thing. Sorry. All these. Uh, so anyway, this is the lightsaber I'm working on here. It's a Graflex replica, and I'm uh, just about done putting it together. It's uh, getting really close. It's taking a while. I had to wait for um, batteries to come in, and this little replacement switch here, which took a while because uh, the first one I got was bad. So, um, oh wait, I can't do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Might be interesting to watch. Might be really, really boring too. But uh, So Graflex lightsaber, let's see. Um, a Graflex lightsaber is this. It's the Luke style or ray style lightsaber from empire strikes back if it's luke or um, obviously the force awakens if it's ray it has a little bunny ears and um and they call it graflex style because that was actually originally a graflex flash gun for cameras and they um that's what they used to make the old the lightsabers in the originals was well some of them a lot of them were just parts and bits and pieces of kitchen sinks and stuff like that until um, they, and then some of them were flash guns from cameras for actual flashes. And let's see, that should be on there. And there we go. <clears throat> so anyway, um, so yeah, that's what this is. So a gentleman in Australia asked me to make this for him. Um, and it's going to be color changing. And uh, yeah, color changing, inhale recharge. And uh, should be pretty cool when it's all done, all said and done. Um, actually, I'm just going to message him real quick and tell him. There we go. So I am using, in this one, I'm using a Spark Color 2. Um, which I like, uh, and I've had set aside for this build for a while, and so it's um, pretty much pretty easy board to use. I am going to be, hey Juan, nice to see ya. Um, you may <laughs> Pretzel Boy made me an edit on Instagram. Cool, I'll have to check that out. Um, let's make. Okay. And when building small stuff, these little uh, surgical tweezers, scissors, whatever you want to call them, come in extremely handy. Um, sorry, i got to use these glasses so I can see better without making my eyes hurt. Should we get there? 
So the way the the um, spark boards work is you have to bridge these little pads to get because this is the driver section of the board here, and then this section is the control section. Um, so you have to bridge these little pads to get the power from the control section to the amps. These little amps here, which drive the LEDs here. So I don't know how far I'll get when oh there yeah today, but. Um, I'd love to actually get it all finished up today. We'll see. That might be live stream part two later tonight um, or something like that. We will see how that works out. So I'm going to pre tin that and then um, That. Actually, I am getting really close to where I might be able to try this thing out and see if it works. Because once I'm done soldering these pads, I can. Um, it's just a matter of really putting everything together, soldering it all together, and then it's ready to go. Relatively speaking, anyway. So like I said, I might not be super interactive on this stream, but uh, I'll try and watch the chat here and there and see how I can respond. Um, let's see. <laughs> you love the epic photo shoot? Thanks, Lord Vader. I appreciate that. That was really, really fun. It was a lot of fun to get to do. Um, I'm really glad we got to do it before Brian had to leave the state. Let's see. Main. Ox. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun, although it was a little awkward, to be honest, sitting there and trying to look and act epic when I felt anything but, at the moment I was feeling really awkward and a little precarious standing up on that, uh, those rocks. Let's see. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I'm kind of committed to that now. Um, Uh, I do know a fair amount about circuitry. I have done, um, when I was a teenager, I used to take apart, for fun, I used to take apart electronic stuff. Just, I was just curious how they worked and stuff like that. Put them together and I started um, repairing a lot of our family electronics because they, we weren't, um, weren't super wealthy and uh, we, also lived in very remote areas, and so I would repair family electronics. Let's see, that's a negative there. So if I can, um, and then when I started down this, I, oh shoot, I don't think. Oh, actually, good, cool, got that. Um, you know, one thing led to another, and here I am, soldering away. Which is uh, actually kind of fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy it a bit. It's nice. So we got battery plus here. Oh, actually, I gotta go that way. Don't I? Yeah. No, that's what I thought. A little too much solder on this pad here. I need to. There we go. Needed to trim it down a bit.
All right, plan B. I was hoping I could keep everything on the underside, but there's little tabs in here that just don't quite allow it, so. Pretzel Boy, having, Pretzel Boy says, having these electronics in your suits kind of forces you to learn how to work on electronics so you won't have any more, <laughs> have to buy any more parts. It's true. It's true. Um, there's enough electronics on these suits. It's a little on the ridiculous side, actually, how much electronics there are in these costumes. It's crazy. Totally worth it, but a little crazy. That... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to drill one tiny little hole here. I think if I do this like this. Then that is going to have to come up. That can go over right to there, right? Actually, change of plans. This is kind of how this works. Sometimes um, when I'm building these, especially ones I don't build a lot, I got to end up. Uh, modifying them as I go. And I haven't done one with a 3D printed chassis before. Well, I have, um, just not like this. So every one of them is a little bit unique, and then adding color changing to it, stuff like that, it all adds to the fun challenge of how to make these things work and look nice and be durable and not have problems. Especially since I'm shipping this one to Australia, I don't want the new owner to have problems with it as soon as they, well, ever, actually, to be honest. I don't want anybody in my my circle here to have problems with my um, builds for, for ever at all. So, uh, Juan, Juan says, walk us through what you're doing so we get what you're doing. We may be Sith, but we don't have mastermind reading yet. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay, so, um, so what I've done is I've hooked up, there's a recharge port here. Um, put this kill key in there. I'll pull out real quick. There we go. So there's a recharge port there. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, sorry, it's probably a little blinding. A battery that sits here along this here. And so right now I'm wiring from the positive of the battery and the negative of the recharge port to the board so that once I get that done, I can start sitting the board down in here and, um, and hooking up the wires here. So I've got like the auxiliary switch, the master switch, and then um, I'm gonna untangle these wires a little bit. I have the positive lead to the LEDs and then I have uh, red, green, and blue LEDs here. Color coordinating is nice. It really does help when you're coming at this again after a couple of weeks break. So right now I've got to tie this positive into this positive from the battery and from the recharge port because you want the recharge port to be able to give power to the battery and charge it. And then also uh, you want the, the battery to be able to give power to the board so the way it works is that when anything is plugged into the recharge port, power doesn't go to the board. So the charger is not powering the board. Um, but, and the way that's done is the negative leg. So the negative keeps the power, um, keeps the circuit from being completed by not allowing the circuit to flow through. So, the but the positive, at least on this board, the positive runs. Oh no. Oh, that's better. Ouch, it gets hot. So the negative, uh, the negative from the, well, the black, 
you won't be able to see it probably, but the black from the recharge port goes to the black of the battery. And then the gray from the recharge port goes from the, um, the recharge port to the board. And what happens is inside the recharge port, there's a little thing uh, that sits like this. And so when, when the plug like this or the, the charger isn't inserted, they touch and it completes a circuit. When, they, when, it's, when something is inserted, it breaks a circuit. Negative still goes to the battery, but no negative gets to the board. So that's how that works, if that makes sense. Some sort of sense, hopefully. Um, so, and what I just had to do, I was going to wire it a little differently than what I'm having to do now. I was going to wire everything under the board, but there's some little, some little um, stops to keep the board where it's supposed to be in the... 3D hilt, the 3D print here, and they're right exactly where the soldering pads on this board are. So I can't, I can't get to them, or I can't solder anything to them, and then have the board sit properly where it's supposed to be seated. So by doing this, what I just did, that will make it considerably easier. And now, ever important, heat shrink to keep these from possibly ever shorting out. Also important, good practice with electronics. And because these batteries carry such high capacity for discharge, um, and they could actually be quite dangerous if they discharged uncontrollably, but most of them have protection circuit on it, they, uh, it's still really important to make sure there's no real chance of any sort of short circuit or anything like that so let me use a heat gun to close that up and just like that it's good so see that there that's how that works um yeah, like I said, this might be a really boring stream for some of you. Might be a really fun stream for others. Time will tell. Or something. Hopefully. Time will tell. So, but I am getting close to actually being able to um, uh, hook all this up and maybe give it a shot. I might be able to make this happen on the live stream, this stream here. If not... If not, I'll be back with another stream later today or something to finish it up and show you all how it all works. Let me get all that wire pulled through and then get this thing to sit on the rails that it's supposed to sit on. Like so. And doing that, those these screws here are is important in this one because um, to get to the recharge port, this twists on and off, and you don't want this whole thing with all the wires twisting all the time. That would be bad. Um, let's see. Why do I have? Interesting. Now I've got to remember um, the wiring because uh, I think it's red, green, blue, but I'm not sure. Uh, hang on. Basically, um, the way that this is set up, the programming, the default programming is set up to uh, To handle, you know, like a, the red LED, the blue LED, and the green LED, or in a certain order, and so it's easy to get it set up right to work with all the programming that's already set, rather than having to reprogram everything if you wired up the way the manufacturer intended it to be wired up that way. So I just can't remember if he what order he did it in. I'm pretty sure it's red, green, blue, but not positive. So. Let's see. Um, uh, 
blue ring red this is what I'm looking for red green blue okay yeah red green blue okay see I would have wired it completely backwards if I hadn't um, checked that out. But since I did, we're all good to go. Oh, I need to... So, and then what I'm doing right now is um, yeah, called pre-tinning the pads. And basically, when you're soldering, Solder doesn't like to stick to certain things, likes to stick to other things. So if you pre-tin, do a tiny little bit of solder on the pads already, then the, um, the solder, the wire, everything else will stick together really well and bond really, really well. Otherwise, it might not stick and it really messes things up. Hey, Brian, thanks for joining us. So glad you joined us because um, I can't moderate the chat very well by myself while I'm trying to do this. Anyway. Um, Fade Legends asks, what is all the parts used in this build? So this is a Graflex 2.0 kit from the Custom Saber shop um, with a one inch adapter from Vader's Vault. So instead of having um, this one here, this one is the default that comes with it, but it's a seventh, seven eighths inch blade holder instead of a one inch blade holder, which because I already sent this gentleman a Vader blade with, or a Vader saber with a one inch blade, I'm going to do the same thing for both, obviously. Uh, and so it has a one inch adapter in it. It has a couple of other things like this little auxiliary switch here, um, a glass eye down here instead of the normal one. And then this is a Goth uh, 3D chassis from Shapeways. This is a Spark Color 2 from Nigon Electronics. The LED is a red, green, blue LED from Nigon Electronics. And I'm going to use like some miscellaneous other speaker stuff like that. It's not really that interesting. Um, a small little speaker that sounds great once it's used. Okay. So, so what I'm doing now, because I got the chassis here, I got all the wiring pulled through, I'm gonna start connecting the wires, um, not the power wires. That'll be dead last. And then I'll need to make a, uh, hook up a speaker and speaker wire and stuff pretty soon too. See if I can get you uh Hey, Yubnub. Nice to see you guys on the stream. Thanks everybody for joining. I think uh, that'll be close, but I think I can do that. So he went red, green, blue. So red, green, blue. Okay, so blue's there. Um, that's going to be long. This, let me pin that. This here. There we go. Pin those wires down a little bit. And then. Yeah, and Brian's right. Um, heat shrinking properly also helps to add to the strain relief a lot. Um, probably a lot more than you would realize or think. And there's nothing worse than getting to this point doing that and then realizing you cut the wire just a little too short. It's really, really heartbreaking. Because basically I'd have to disassemble everything and start over. Um, you could cheat and just splice in a wire and heat shrink it, but I don't like doing that because anytime you have a connection that's not original, uh, or anytime you add a connection, it's a weak point, or potential weak point. And so 
I just would have to, and I can't bring myself to do that, so I would have to take the whole thing apart and start over, which isn't really a fun thought. Um, all right, so I got those stripped now. I'm going to pre-tin the wires for the same reason that I pre-tin the board. And then, so my goal with this is, uh, because this is exposed and looks beautiful, I'm going to try and solder everything to the underside of the board instead of the what's going to be showing, so that when the customer opens this up and looks, it's just this beautifully clean, beautiful clean installation instead of um, just a mass of bundled wires and an SD card. There will be a, two wires on top here and two wires on top here, which are the speaker and the positive and negative leads to the board. but that's okay we can deal with that so now the fun begins let's see here to see if I can actually even pull this off because I haven't really tried to do this before at least not what I'm trying to do now Got to make sure I get this right. Just like that. Okay, everybody, hold your breath. Wait. Now, now for the green one. Two. So far so good, I haven't burnt anything up. No blue smoke has come floating out, which is good. Yes, Flux. This is Flux, a little Flux pen. It's great. It um, helps the heat transfer faster and helps keep things clean so that the solder goes on and flows really quickly to the pad because you don't want to sit with a whole bunch of really hot heat on these pads for very long as they will fry really quickly plus you got all these little tiny sensitive electronics sitting right next to those pads as well and they will fry really really fast so all right one two three done now, yes, that will work. Perfect. Well, perfect might be an overstatement, but so get rid of some extra wire there. Um, let's see, we have main here. Yeah.
Okay. This is probably about as exciting as watching paint dry, isn't it? Is it just like the most riveting thing you've ever seen? Tiny, microscopic, minute things is just, um, I'm sure it's super fascinating <laughs> to all of you guys. I mean, if it is, that's, that's cool. Sometimes I, yeah. Sometimes I think to myself, why would anybody want to watch that? But then I would watch it. So, so there you go. All right. Okay. Come on now. Come on now. Sometimes the little pre-bend is important. It really helps to get things set. All right. There we go. And this is where, man, you want to be fast. Like, get it down there, tag it on, and get out. You really don't want to sit with the heat on there. Oh, shoot. You don't want to sit with the heat on there for too long, that's for sure. And I give a little tug on all my connections to make sure they're actually good. So you don't get up like what they call cold solder joints where the it looks good, but the it doesn't really work. The the connection is bad and you will get problems. Yeah, I thought about doing a zoom, but it doesn't um I was messing around with it earlier and it just doesn't it didn't it, it the the stream and the the quality just isn't quite good enough for it there we go that's beautiful love it this is probably what it's like for dentists when they work in our work on uh our uh teeth hey uh hey tom Yeah, I wish there was a way to talk through this. That would be kind of nice. Like, because if I could hear you guys, I could respond. Tom knows what this is like. Endless amounts of soldering. Brian knows what this is like too. I know both of you guys have done your fair share of more than your fair share maybe of soldering. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bits of electronics. getting there it is good stress relief it's uh yeah that's actually partly why i started doing it again and by again i mean like the electronics stuff was because it's it's very it's very stress relieving almost there actually i'm gonna be able to turn this puppy on here in a second which is um, actually, yeah, a lot more than I thought I would be able to get done this fast. There we go, that should work. Because there's the whole underside of the board. Set. Oh, see, look at that. Doesn't that look nice and neat on the top? You don't see anything. It's all just tucked underneath, which is as awesome so speaker 
don't remember if this is a uh, deep enough for this or not. Oh yeah. Oh, we're so totally gonna do that. I like these. So there's two different kinds of speakers you can get. Primarily, there's this kind, which is the uh, Custom Saber Shop Premium speaker. It's not bad. It's super low profile and thin, which is good. And then there's this guy here, which is the high bass speaker. I love this thing. It's awesome. They sound great, especially in the Kylo builds. These things sound beefy and beautiful. And I think, yeah. You guys hear the ice cream truck behind me? It's uh, trolling on my neighborhood. My kids are gone. Well, two of my kids are gone. Now, and I like I like the premium speaker for the right application, but they're really fragile, and I've had several fall apart on me really easily not like fall apart on me but they just they don't take much to like fall apart so but this high bass speaker is really a has a nice beefy sound to it and it really does a good job unless i can't oh dang wait no that's right right That's good. Okay. Almost there, gentlemen. Almost there. Sure didn't look at that. Tom, how's your uh Oh, Tom was going swimming. Yeah. All right. Hey, Ron. Hey, Pastor Ron. Nice. Thanks for joining us. Whereabouts are you located in the world? Oh, I did it backwards. If you don't mind telling me. Um, I'm in Alaska. Yes, this is the Graflex 2.0 kit with a one-inch blade adapter from uh, Vader's Vault. A spark color two, a red, green, blue LED in the blade, and in just a few minutes here, I'm going to be powering it up for the first time. You guys will get to see live if I screwed anything up. Um, because I haven't really tested much of this out before. Almost there. Three more solder points, and then I can try this thing out. Let's see. Let's see how good of a job I really did.
second to last solder point. Has anybody else ever looked up on YouTube and looked up the, uh, like, you know, there's like 10 hours of train sounds, 10 hours of jet sounds. You're going to be able to watch 10 hours of soldering sounds, which is me going like this. For 10 hours. Wouldn't that be fun? There we go. All right. Also important, you don't ever want to solder with your SD card in the board. Okay, now pull the kill key and we should hear a boot up sound of some sort. That's a good sign. Let me turn some lighting off here so we can actually see. Uh, that's a really good sign. All right, let's see here. Should be good. So Ryan, you know who you are, because I told you I was streaming your the last few minutes of your build here. This is your saber. So, well, sort of. I'm in here, Ian. I'm in here. No, with a short blade. Orange. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Purple-ish. I don't know why you can see it. Blue, light blue. Oops. Yellow, orange again. It's kind of a light blue, purplish. Deep blue. Ooh, I like that. It's cool. Green. Back to red. So the way I got it set up right now is basically just twisting the saber changes the color and then you can change the fonts using this little lock switch here. Well, that sounds interesting. Well that's kind of cool sounding. And then you got, oh that's cool. I've never messed with these settings before. put a longer blade in so y'all can see this a little bit better. Uh, let's see. There we go. These aren't the best. Those aren't the best blades. That's just a... I just cut that off of a master replica blade to kind of try it out and see. Um, I still need to cut that set screw down a bit, but anyway. Oh my gosh. There, can you see that better? Maybe. It's really cool. That's cool.
bad. Kill the room light. How's that? Let's see. That's true. I have done a lot of converting those there. Um, no, uh, FOD Legends, I don't plan on doing, uh, well, maybe an ESB, but probably not an ANH. Um, Yeah, definitely no plans for NH. Not at the moment, anyway. Not to say I'm ruling it out completely or anything like that, but but just not now. So, all right. Now that the room lights are off, is that better? Can you see it? Lovely green. The red. Kind of a yellow. Back to the purple sort of ish. Light, light blue, yellow, amber. I would, I would call that an amber. That's like an Arctic white. Actually, that's really cool. I like how it flickers a bit too. That's pretty cool. Back to really nice, nice deep blue. I actually like the sound set on this. I'd never listened to this before. It's really cool. Not bad. the white huh so there you go Let's turn some lights back on There you go, Ryan. <laughs> I'll do an instructional video for you here in a little bit after I finish up a few things, but uh, you're nearly there. Um, actually, that last one I did, the blue with the uh, like amber yellow flash on clash, that is really cool. I might consider doing something like that for myself down the road. But, yeah, that's, that's that. So then, to cut the power to the board, or to charge this battery, which I need to do, because it's a brand new battery, it came with a low charge to begin with for travel. I'm gonna put this uh, kill key back in, right there. So now there's no power to the board. Nothing will happen. So, but overall, I'm pretty happy with that install. See how it's nice and clean on the top. I couldn't get these wires to go under because of the way there's there's the tabs sitting in there. I wish I could have kept it totally clean on top. It would have been nice. But and then there's inside there's a whole mass of wires there. I'm gonna 
uh, bolt this down here on these little, it's got these little threads, runners that I had to drill into and tap into there. But overall, pretty happy with how this hilt turn, is turning out. Um, so I got some little details like the, I'll be putting in the clamp card for the top. And then there's also, oh, that's interesting what that's for. A stray SD card from something. Um, these little guys here, I don't know if you can see these little tiny brass pins, they go into this part here. And so they kind of, they're a real pain to get in, but we'll do that in a little bit. Put those in and then um, get everything kind of mounted up and set up so that it's where everything's supposed to be and do some final touches of uh, glue and stuff like that for the like the speaker and make sure nothing's going to come out and fall apart. But there you have it. A Graflex 2.0 build. Um, not just today. I've been working on this one for a while, but like I tapped. You can see the, the screws there, there, and there. I tapped and drilled those a while back. And then um, had to do some modifications to this, the auxiliary switch, which is right here on the side. You can see that right there. That works really cool. And then this red button here. And yeah, this is the set screw for the blade, which I need to cut down because it sticks through about, I don't know, eighth to a third of an inch too far. Once I get that cut down, it'll be great. Because basically I, I want it to be there, well, there-ish when a blade is in and tight. And then when a blade is out, you can just tighten it the rest of the way down. And, um, yeah. So, anyway, let's see. Uh, Mark Hoofman, you may want to adjust your clamp to a better position. Yeah, the clamp, the clamp sits, it just, it goes wherever. And then there's a little set screw that goes in here. So I got to double check and see because I, off the top of my head, I can't remember if it's an ESB build or a um, a &H or a TFA build uh, for the gentleman that I'm doing this for. Uh, thanks for joining us, Pastor. Uh, nice to have you with us for a little bit there. Uh, let's see. You're getting a ghost host helmet from Danny. Awesome. The ghost host be good for A and H and Rogue One. Is it an A and H helmet? Is it a Rogue One or an A and H helmet? Um, for Rogue One, it's different. Uh, the The differences between A and H and Rogue One are quite a bit. Um, I showed it on one of my like two live streams ago. I think I I showed you the difference between A and H and Rogue One. So check the differences. There's some little incised lines on the tusk tubes. Um, and then there, the dome sits higher for sure. And so check that other than that. Well, the lenses are a lot more red than Amber, but other than that, they're pretty similar. So, uh, anyway, but if it goes, host, if it's a ghost host, a and H, you could definitely modify it pretty easily to put it in, um, to a rogue one helmet and the ghost host i'm not super familiar with that helmet but i think it's a pretty decent helmet hey sport guy welcome you're <laughs> jumping in here on the last few minutes of the stream but i just completed a saber build and was trying it out well i completed it on stream and then tried it out on stream so if you want to watch that in a few minutes here you can roll back to about what is it 54 right now probably about 40 something and that's when i started messing with this here so other than that, I'm going to jump off the stream now because I've got to go get some dinner going for my kids and my family. And uh, let's see, Monday night I'm streaming live with Sarah, who is our the Kylo you've seen in most of the vlogs. She's going to be joining me, so that'll be Monday night at 7 Alaska time, which is 8 Pacific, um, 9 Mountain, 10, 10 Central, 11 East Coast time. And if you're somewhere else in the world, you'll have to figure it out yourself. But at 7 Alaska time, I'm going to stream then with Sarah, our Kylo, and um, we'll be talking with her. So you can join us then. Um, other than that, I think the next video I have coming up, 
uh, what did it say? There, there, okay. Friday, tomorrow, I'm going to go through my Darth Vader helmet um, cooling system and post that video because, hey, Ben, you finally caught it. Yeah, this is a good one, too, because I just completed this Graflex build. I think I would make you proud. Ben uh, Ben Hobbies, who just joined the stream, for you to, those of you who don't know, is a really amazing sabersmith. You should go check out some of his videos and some of the stuff he's built is phenomenal. And when I say sabersmith, I mean somebody that makes hilts and everything from scratch. Um, I would consider myself an installer because I don't make... I, I machine little bits here and there, but I don't make hilts from scratch and I don't do much other than put pieces together and, and install stuff and put it together or convert stuff. Ben is a saber smith in the fact that he actually builds them from scratch and does an amazing job. So, but he's over in France and he and I've been friends on Facebook for a little while now and talking about some stuff we're working on together, um, a saber or two, well, one for now, but we'll see how, where that goes after that and we've been trying to figure out a way to do a live stream together and so far we've been i've been um not having any luck with that but sometime we're going to do something a live stream together anyway but uh but check out his channel because he's got some cool stuff on his channel some really really cool saber he has one saber that is insanely bright just unbelievably bright um yeah super 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 bright so anyway uh, yeah, when the Saber project that he and I are working on together right now gets done, I will definitely be showing it off in the live stream and probably on a regular, you know, video too. But, so, glad you made it. Uh, cute, neat, and clean. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Neat and clean. Yeah, that was my goal. The only thing I couldn't do, I was kind of bummed, is I couldn't get these two wires and these two wires on the underside because there's some tabs in there that hold the board in place and they're just right exactly where the pads have to be so oh well anyway but this one's almost done I'm gonna clean up my desk a bit and uh yeah monday night 7 p.m alaska time i'll be back actually that's some good wire i'll probably save that and um be talking with our kylo up here so if you guys want to tune in then Otherwise, next video up, I think is going to be my Darth Vader helmet cooling system build because I've had quite a few questions about that. And so I might walk you through how I build them. Um, actually, I've got one I need to build now, so I might go ahead and just build that and do a stream then. That would be, be tomorrow, I think. Probably, most likely tomorrow. So, hey, Michelle. Anyway. Thanks all for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate your supporting this channel. If you haven't and you're just joining and you haven't subscribed already, hit subscribe. Thanks for liking and sharing these videos. Um, and I will see you again soon on the next video.